welcome back to another episode of Yoda Learning Academy. I'm Rishabh and in this 90 minutes video, I will take you from basic to the really advanced level of VLOOKUPs. Not just VLOOKUPs, but all the associated formulas. Now before I start, let me tell you, each subtopic has been time stamped and given in the description. So if you want to jump topics and learn the portions which you want to, you can look at the description, click on the link and the video will jump right to the level where you want to start. In this video, I'll not only talk about the basics of VLOOKUP such as why do we use VLOOKUP true versus false? What common errors do people make while writing VLOOKUP? What is the difference between VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP? But also I'll go beyond that. So for example, you'll get to know how to use VLOOKUP and MATCH to do a 2D lookup, how you'll do a reverse lookup using index match match and those are all the intermediate stuff. However, my main objective is to take you to the advanced level stuff, which means how do you use VLOOKUP plus MATCH and indirect function to create a 3D lookup? How do you use HLOOKUP and MATCH? You may have seen a lot of videos on VLOOKUP plus MATCH, but in this video, I'll also talk about HLOOKUP plus MATCH. So go ahead, look into the description below and you'll find the time stamped topics. Click on the one that you desire to learn and I hope that you find something new this time. Along the way, if you love any topic, please do mention that in the comment section. So let's start. In this video, we'll talk about VLOOKUP formula. Plain and simple, the starting point of VLOOKUP formula. What is it meant for? And eventually, we'll also talk about why is it so important to learn more about VLOOKUP. Now, in this example before our screen, lies one database and the database is a theoretical database, serial number, employee ID, name, gender, age. Now, from these given set of employee IDs and names, maybe for curiosity, I would have picked up four random employee IDs. Now, I want to know what the names are for the respective IDs. Now, if you were to do this manually, you would have to first copy this entire cell. You'll have to press Control F. Then Control F will prompt you with find and replace box. I'll have to paste that particular number in that box. And this will enable me to find all the occurrences of this number. Now, this is a manual method to search for a number. What we want is an automated formula solution, which not only fetches us the name for the first employee ID, but all the remaining three as well. Let's see how it works. I start by writing equal to VL. Now, since 2007 version of Excel, as soon as you start typing in few letters of any formula, you will get a drop down. If the drop down already highlights the formula that you desire to use, you can press the tab key to bring it along. Now here comes the series of parameters which we'll be trying to feed in to get our answer. The first thing it says lookup value. Be very careful. This is lookup value and not values. This is the link with which I'm supposed to connect my question with the database from where I'm supposed to pull the answer. So lookup value, look for the employee ID. Now I'll put a comma so that I can proceed to the next part of the parameter which says table array. Now one of the prerequisites of VLOOKUP is whatever common value that you're trying to connect your question with the table that must be present in the first column of the selection of table that you are going to make. So although it says table array doesn't mean that you will choose the entire table because in which case VLOOKUP will not be able to look for that value in the first column of the chosen table array. So what we do, we go ahead and start selecting the table array selection right from the column which contains the common link. Once I've chosen that, I'm going to press function key F4. Now we have seen this in earlier videos that this helps me lock the entire range of table array. If I proceed with copy pasting the formula downwards, this table array will hold its current position. It will not move down. Eventually, in some time, you will see what would have happened had I not pressed F4 and locked the range. So thereafter, I put a comma, column index number. Amongst the number of columns that you have chosen, the four columns, which column is supposed to fetch you the real answer? That's the second one. So I'll give a numeric value, which is two. Had you wished to get the gender of the particular employee ID, you would have given three. As of now, I'll stick to two. 
comma. So the fourth parameter which it asks for is true versus false. Since I want an exact match, that means only if you find this particular number in the database, only and only then you please fetch me the name. If there is even one digit difference, please do not give me the name. Instead, give me any. So as of now, I'm going to choose false. Now for VLOOKUP or for Excel rather, false is equivalent to zero and true is equivalent to one. Concept of Boolean value. Hence, instead of false, a lot of professionals prefer to give zero, which is fine. Let me close the bracket and press enter. As I copy paste this formula down, either through mouse, you'll notice amongst the four employee IDs, I only got one NA. And why is that? The primary reason of this NA could be that this particular number doesn't exist in the database in which you are trying to look for that particular number. So this was basics of VLOOKUP. To continue with our previous example, you may have also asked me, what if I wanted to know the age of these employees? So let's just do a quick round of practice and see how we look up the same formula can be used to fetch the age. So e equal to V L. Let me press the tab key. Look up value. This is the anchor. This is the common link which will help you fish out the information from the database given below. So look up value looking for that employee ID comma table array. Now I would definitely choose the table array starting from the column which contains the common link. Now you can very well propose to me, look, if I had taken lookup value as the name, the previous cell name, in which case the table array selection would have had to be starting from this column and thereafter onwards. So as of now, let me stick to my original strategy. That is equal to VL, pressing the tab key, looking up for value employee ID, comma, table array. Let me start from the cell or the cell below, doesn't matter if you do not take in the header. As of now, I'm taking the full data, including the employee ID as the first column. Now, assume for a moment that you did not press F4, which is used to lock the range. And I continue, column index number. In this case, I want age, which is in the fourth column, four. Now be careful if there are any hidden columns that must also be counted for counting the sequence. So as of now, since there are no hidden columns, so one, two, three, four, finally zero or false for exact match. I could have also given zero. Now before I press enter, let me just remind you that I did not freeze this particular table array. Now when I copy paste it down, notice I'm getting two NAs. Now why is that so? Let me help you figure it out. If I double click on the first formula, notice the blue border, it is pointing to the first employee ID and the table arrays being highlighted by the red border. If I look at the next one, as expected, the blue border has shifted down to the next employee ID. But on the other hand, the red border is indicating that the table array has also shifted. So eventually, as you move forward vertically, copy pasting the formula down, the table array marked by the red border is pointing to an area which I did not choose in the first place. It has shifted below. So technically speaking, VLOOKUP is looking for this particular employee ID, trying to look for this in this designated red colored border area, and it doesn't find that ID. Why? Because that ID lies outside. So for this very reason, I wanted us to fix the table array. So I go back to the formula. I choose this entire selection and I'm going to press F4. Once having done so, let me press enter, which I have. Let me then copy paste the formula. Now I get the perfect answer. So this was completion of basics of VLOOKUP formula. In this video, we'll talk about VLOOKUP with true option. Now I've been asked several number of times, when do we use VLOOKUP with false? And when do we use VLOOKUP with true option towards the last parameter? In this particular example, I'll show you the difference between the two. Take for instance, before us lies one table, the second table, and it talks about the coal that I'm importing, the percentage of impurities, if it exceeds, if it is more than or equal to 0% and has not touched 2%, then it is a very good quality coal and hence we will be grading it as A1. Similarly, for example, if the coal imported contains 7% impurities, then it will be classified under A3. Why A3? Because 7% is more than or equal to 5% but has not touched 8% level. Now, 
I want to execute the formula in such a manner that it automatically finds out the grading for the coal which has 8.5 percentage impurities. So I am forcing the VLOOKUP formula, VLOOKUP, look up for 8.5 percent. That's the common link which will help us connect between the question and the table, comma, table array. I may choose header, I may not, but in either case I must ensure that the first column contains the common link. And as soon as I choose that, I'm going to press function key F4 to lock the range, comma. Column index number, out of the two columns, I want us to fetch the answer from the second column, hence two, comma. Finally, if we start with an option false or zero, zero indicates exact match, I will get no answer. Simple reason, 8.5% is nowhere to be seen in the first column. You will get 8%, you will get 10%, but not 8.5%. So a lot of professionals, what do they do? They try their luck with digit one towards the last at the range lookup and they pray and somehow the answer can be deducted. You get the answer, people are happy, but wait, this was a sheer coincidence. Just because zero doesn't get applied in VLOOKUP and it's not fetching you the answer doesn't mean that it gives you the right to apply one just like that. Because to be able to use one or true, you need to fulfill three conditions to get the perfect correct answers. Condition number one is that the data in the table must be placed in a slabs based format. What are slabs based format? You have noticed age groups, percentage of impurities, maybe capacity utilization of different power plants. So the numbers must be placed in a slab based format and they should be in ascending order. If they are not in ascending order, VLOOKUP with one will give you a disastrous result which you cannot expect and more often than not it's going to be an incorrect answer. So condition one, slab based table. Condition two, the values inside the slab must be in ascending order. And condition number three, most important, the numbers inside the slabs must be read in terms of more than equal to. Now you can give other synonyms for more than equal to in terms of onwards at least. So the main idea is these three conditions if it is met then only you apply VLOOKUP with one or true. And we'll see more example how this can be helpful in calculating other answers. For the time being I'm just testing this particular formula for accuracy. If I give let's say 0% impurity A1, 1.5% A1 but the moment it touches 2% it's going to be A2. Similarly, let's say 22% Z category. I'll give you more example. Remember in our school and college days when we were classified under three primary categories, fail, pass, distinction based on our scores. So in case you have been able to build a slab in the form of more than equal to and the numbers are in ascending order with the respective judgments across them, I can use this logical table to be able to deduct answers for people who would have scored in terms of 54, 12 out of 100, 98 out of 100. So I start with VLOOKUP, look for 54, that's the score, comma, I will choose the entire table and immediately I'm going to fix it by pressing function key F4, thereafter comma, column index number. Out of the two column, the answer must be fresh from second column, that's two, and finally, since the three conditions are met, I'll be putting one as a proxy for true. And here what I get is pass, copy pasting downwards, fail distinction. In case the first person would have got 34, he would have been classified under the category of fail. The second person had he, had he been 40, pass. Distinction, 90 onwards. The moment the score touches 89, it becomes a normal pass. HR managers can use this technique to score the test papers of candidates who have come for recruitment. Similarly, if you think you have more values under which the candidate must be classified, then you can build this table and the formula length will not increase. For example, if I add one more value, let's say 100, person who scores 100 and he is super genius. In that case, all I have to do is go back to the VLOOKUP formula and just extend the table array by that one extra row. So now, if that any one student within our sample of three students gets 100, he will be considered as super genius. Now, I've been seeing professionals using a nested if statement to do the same thing. But imagine if you were to do that using nested if statement, how would it look? You'll have to first say if the score is 
less than 40 then please give a verdict fail if not please go ahead and ask another question using another if and that too then you again ask the similar question if the score is less than 90 then please consider pass and so on imagine the length of the formula as, as you go on increasing the number of verdicts so as much as possible if you think that nested if is getting generated stop for a while and think whether VLOOKUP with true can be used I believe so far you have learned quite a bit about VLOOKUP the intricacies of VLOOKUP and as a continuation of where do we apply VLOOKUP with true option I'll show you more examples now just a quick recap when do we apply VLOOKUP with true when we had three conditions being met by the data one is a slab based non-continuous values so it has to be uh, 0 40 90 and they must be placed in more than equal to format and ascending order now imagine if you are creating a financial model yes a financial model where you have to forecast the rent that you might have to pay over the period of next seven years in case the year of operation is more than equal to zero and it has not touched third year of operation that means the rent payable is 20,000 per month in case you touch the third year of operation which means more than equal to 3 then the rent increases to 24,000 and the moment you touch sixth year of operation the rent becomes 30,000 so now if I were to apply VLOOKUP how would it look now the moment I write VLOOKUP you might think for a moment now why am I not using HLOOKUP because the data looks horizontally placed right well you are going to use VLOOKUP because the value which which you are going to find the answer the values in the table are placed vertically and not horizontally so these are other lookup values one by one which we are going to choose later but as of now this one lookup value has been placed vertically so lookup value year one comma next choosing the entire table ensuring I press F4 comma thereafter and from the two columns I must fetch the answer from second column now remember since all three conditions are met we'll be applying one or true either of the two so one close the bracket and this formula which if I copy paste towards the right hand side you'll notice it quickly based on the year of operation calculates the rent so imagine if this were fourth year the moment I'm going to press enter look at the value in the fourth year now if I change this to let's say two let's look at the value under the year number two it becomes 24,000 and the last value if I change this to five notice from fifth year onwards the 30,000 rent is going to start accruing so this was another example where we could use this in financial model and it could also be used when you have to allocate the royalty payments over the years based on third year or fifth year or maybe 18th year of operation similarly I have seen several accountants they prepare a typical MIS report which has to classify the open invoices that means people or customers specifically who have not paid me any money for a certain bit of time and their invoices are overdue so they have to classify all the open invoices in few categories of 0 to 30 days overdue 31 to 60 days overdue and so on so forth so before you find out the category under which these open invoice overdue days must be placed your table must be created first column ascending order values slab base and more than equal to is how they should be read the second column is where your verdict should be placed based on that if you were to apply VLOOKUP look for 122 days which is overdue comma table array choosing the entire column and as usual I'm going to press F4 to fix and lock the range comma out of the two columns I must fetch the answer from second column and finally since the three conditions are in place I'll be putting one by the way in case you did not put any one or true by default it considers true but also keep a note that if you had put in a comma it will consider it as false so to avoid this confusion I'll be very specific by putting one for true and zero for false currently giving you that answer that all these open invoices are classified under respective categories now all these slabs which we saw in the previous video and in the current video not only works with pure numbers but also with dates yes in case you want to classify all your purchase transaction or invoice dates under these categories that is 
quarter one of 2014-15, quarter two of 2014-15, maybe after 2014-15, in which case I have classified the dates in this benchmark. More than equal to zero, the zero indicates a very old date. But the moment the invoice date touches 1st April 14, it will be classified as per Indian Fiscal Standard quarter 1 of 2014-15. The moment the invoice date touches 1st July 2014, it will be classified under quarter 2 2014-15. So in this manner, if you are able to create that ascending order slabs with more than equal to sign, although sign is not important, but the meaning is, but this only for our reference. So once these things are in place, I can quickly write a formula which will tell me that these hypothetical dates under what pool must they be classified into. So we look up, look for 15 September, comma, then choosing the entire set of data, pressing F4, comma, column index number 2, and finally 1. Closing the brackets and pressing enter. Just to check whether it's been working correctly, you notice 15 September which is just before 1st of October has been classified as quarter 2, 2014 and 15. So this not only work with numbers, it can also work with dates. This video, we talk about the differences between VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP and more specifically, the practical advantage of one over another. So example number one, before us lies a table which has some hypothetical names regarding the company names and their respective information with respect to sales and cost. Now, if you want to fetch company blues cost, now when I look at the series of information given before me with respect to company name, I notice they are placed vertically. Hence, I am bound to use VLOOKUP. Look for the company blue, that's the lookup value, comma, thereafter choosing the table starting with the column containing the common link, as usual, I'm going to press F4, comma thereafter, and column index number 3, because I want to fetch the answer from the third column, 3, comma 0, enter. Now the same data, same data, if I were to transpose it, so pay special, transpose, you would notice that the company name now have been placed horizontally. In case you wished to find the answer now for blues cost, you would be proceeding with HLOOKUP. So although it contains almost same set of parameters as VLOOKUP, there's one minor difference which I'll explain in some time. Lookup value, look for the company blue, that's the question, comma, table array. Now this time ensure that the first row definitely contains the company name. So the first row contains company name with which I'm going to press F4 to fix and lock the range, comma. This time it doesn't say column index number, it says row index number, which means HLOOKUP has already attempted finding where is company blue but now once it has found out it needs to know from which of the three rows the answer needs to be fetched from. So since cost lies in the third row I'll be pushing numeric three value row index number three and as usual false indicates exact match so I can also put in zero as a proxy for false closing the brackets enter. So that was the difference between VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. Now you might ask me why is VLOOKUP more popular for the very simple reason that whatever data you download from ERP or databases, most of them, more than 95% of them are placed vertically. And that is the reason why people use VLOOKUP more frequently than HLOOKUP. In this video session, we learn about a match formula which is going to be extremely beneficial if you have been using VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP and index formula. And you'll see why this holds such big importance if you're working with such formulas. In the first example, which might seem theoretical at the first instance, I want us to look for the word sales and trying to find the position number in the set of three blue cells which I've highlighted. So I write the formula equal to MAT using the autocomplete feature of Excel 2007, 10 and 2013. I'll press tab key. Now the first parameter asks me to look up for one value. Please note it's a singular item, look up value. I choose the cell containing the word sales. I put a comma. Note the next item says look up array, it doesn't says table array, which means you cannot, even if you want to, you cannot choose a table like structure in the selection. Either you choose a part of a row 
or a part of a column but any time it has to be one dimensional array so this time lookup array I'm choosing this entire block and as usual for any given array or range I'm going to press F4 comma finally it tells me that if you want an exact match that means if you're looking for the word sales it has to be sales exact match so I choose 0 I close the bracket enter now I'm getting an answer to what does this 2 signifies? It signifies that amongst the group of 3 cells, the word sales is positioned in the second column. The moment I change the word to cost, it changes to 3. Since the formula is not case sensitive, even if you write cost in capital, it still is going to work. Although, if you were writing a word sale without an extra s at the last, it will give you NA primarily because you are looking for an exact match and sales has to be sales as per the question. This was using match horizontally. Now we see how match works for a vertical set of items. So I write equal to match. I look up for a value black. That's one of the hypothetical company names, comma, and look up array. As discussed earlier, we cannot make the selection as a form of a table. It has to be one dimensional. In this case, I'm choosing this as lookup array. I'm going to press F4 to fix that range and comma followed by zero, zero for exact match. Thus closing the brackets thereafter. Now some of you might ask me, how did I put that zero instantly? If you press down arrow key and choose this zero and then press tab key, it automatically gives that zero. So I close the brackets and I press enter thereafter. So black, one, two, three, four, five, six. Had I written red, it would have given me an answer of three. Now please note, since it's a theoretical example, you might have also chosen one cell less in the lookup array, in which case the count of the word red would have been two. In one of our earlier examples, we had seen the theoretical application of match formula with an exact match. Now, before we really jump into the practical application, just one loose end to tie up. That is, when do we use match with minus one or one? What do I mean by that? You would have noticed in some of the previous videos that when I start writing match, after the second parameter, the third parameter gives you three options. We had used only one, which was zero exact match we had not taken care of one and minus one so at a theoretical level how are they are to be applied let's take an example let's say there's a slab of uh, scores and i just have five categories more than equal to zero more than equal to 40 anybody who has scored or touched more than 80 maybe more than 90 and more than equal to 100 although it's a 100 marks test but 100 is a cap so all these numbers are being read as more than equal. Now I want to find out if the score would have been 81, under which category would it fall under? Logically, it should fall under this category. Why? Because it says more than or equal to 81. So 1, 2, 3, 4 is what I should be getting. Equal to match, lookup value 81, comma, time for the time being. I am choosing only this data just to test how the answer is going to react. I'm going to press F4, comma. Now, since this is an ascending order, I'll be using one. Close the bracket, enter. So I'm getting an answer three. And why so? Because 81 has to be captured by the third value, more than or equal to 80. Now for the time being, assume that the score was 79. Since it is more than equal to 40, but has not touched 80, it should be classified under two, one, two. So that's how it works. One is generally used when you have a data, which is placed in ascending order in the meaning of more than equal to and with that we are going to use match one similarly if you had a data which was placed in less than equal to format now instead of score let me just put the age to help you understand this better had the age been less than equal to 100 or less than equal to 80 or 55 or 30 or 15 how would i want the input to be placed at what sequence number so i write equal to match look for ed1 comma choosing the entire set of arrays starting from the first number I'm going to fix it comma since it is in descending order the entire list I'll be pushing for minus one I close the bracket and let me see what I get I'm getting one let's understand why since 81 is less than or equal to 100 but it has not touched 80 
or any number below it, it is the first instance under which it has been classified. Now imagine if I put 80, 80. The moment it touches 80, it must be classified under second category. If I give 75, it still will be under category 2. But if I give uh, 54, let's see what happens. So eventually as we proceed in our program, we'll see what are the practical applications of the 0, 1, minus 1 and overall where match can be used. As of now, the bottom line is match is used to find the instance number. Match is used to find the sequence number, the position number, 4, 2nd or 3rd in a given set of 1 dimensional array. It never works with a 2 dimensional or table array. I'm sure you'd be fascinated by the trick that I'm about to share with you right now because I believe this trick is going to help you a lot in preparing MIS reports, dashboards and lot many other reports which otherwise would take a lot of time. And I'll start with the semi-practical examples, a smaller data set to be able to explain the trick. Now imagine that you have a data set where the vertically placed cells contain all the hypothetical company names and horizontally placed cells are containing the two items of financial numbers, sales and cost. Now, in a simple way, if I were to tell you what is the structure of the data, I would say it's something like this. One set vertical, one set horizontal. The intersection of two elements, for example, blue sales, intersection of two elements is what is supposed to give you the answer. So in this example, I've taken two elements. One is company red and the second element is sales. I wish to find out what is the sales for the company red. Now, of course, I can look at the data and tell you right now, red sales 3400. But I want a formula to fetch this answer for me such that in future, if I write orange in the first yellow cell in our case study, it quickly changes the answer to 4500. If I change this to cost, automatically it will bring me 4000. So that is the automation we are trying to look forward to. First, what can help us? VLOOKUP. Why VLOOKUP? VLOOKUP, as the name suggests, it will look for one value and that too vertically. But wait, if I start writing VLOOKUP, you might have a question, uh, should I take orange, should I take cost or should I take both? Because as we had discussed, there are two elements which is supposed to fetch you the answer. If you're thinking of applying both the selection, we'll be incorrect. Why? Because it says lookup value. It doesn't says lookup values. So I'll have to restrict myself to only one cell selection. Now the second part is amongst these two, which one? Orange or cost? Now since the name suggests VLOOKUP and in our earlier videos, we also saw that the prerequisite of VLOOKUP is whatever common link or clue with which you're trying to connect the data and fetch the answer, that common link or clue must be placed vertically in the first column of your table array. So hence, keeping all this in mind, we will choose orange and not cost. Orange as lookup value, comma, table array. I have to keep in mind that the first column of our table array selection must contain the common link and thereafter we can choose the entire block. Just to make sure the table array doesn't changes or shift its position, I will press F4, F4 to lock the range, comma, now out of the three columns, I must fetch the answer from the third column because I am looking for cost. So I put in column index number three, comma. Finally, false for exact match. Orange means orange and not red. So I put zero instead of false. That's perfectly acceptable. Enter. But the difference between the first formula that I wrote right now and the one that I had written quite some time back, notice that moment I change this to sales, the first one remains static but the second one automatically gives you sales numbers for orange. So what is the difference? The difference is I had automated this section of VLOOKUP formula, which is talking about column index number. Since for cost you had given one, two, three, it was a pure and simple count. For sales, you would have counted one and two. In simple words, you would want to outsource this task of counting to another formula which we have discussed in a one of our previous videos that's called match formula. What is match formula? Let me put a dummy placeholder of match. When I say dummy placeholder, I also refer to the fact that I'm closing the bracket immediately for match formula without having written any parameter inside it. Now, using the learning from our previous videos, match, look up for a word which I want the formula to find and count in the header. So lookup value sales comma 
it doesn't say table array it says lookup array which means it has to be one dimensional so you are trying to look for the word sales starting from where the vlookup formula had started selecting its table array and only choosing the header not the entire data and certainly not less than what vlookup had chosen and of course also not taking more cells than what vlookup had chosen so i make sure the header is chosen as usual i'm going to fix this array i press f4 comma 0 0 indicates exact match exact match for whom for the word sales let me press enter and let me test it i put cost answer changes and that's what we want so what has match done for you match is trying to look for the word cost it then gives you the count 1 2 and 3 had the word been sales it would have counted 1 and 2 so in plain simple language match is doing the task for you with respect to counting This is a quick recap of VLOOKUP match combo formula, and we'll be referring to VLOOKUP as senior formula, match being the junior formula. VLOOKUP is the one who will be focusing on the entire table array. The parameter says table array, so that's the red dotted border which is indicating the area or the region in which VLOOKUP will operate. But how does match come into the picture? Match is the one who will assist VLOOKUP formula on one parameter, that is column index number. Initially we had to count this sequence 1 2 and 3 which column the answer must be fetched from but right now we have automated this using match formula the area of operation for match formula at this moment is just the header and we ensure that the match doesn't start from before the area of vlookup or later it should be in sync with the header of vlookup selection So in simple terms the junior formula or the match formula should follow the footsteps of vlookup formula in terms of the boundaries and will only focus on one dimension either header or the one portion of a column but never both at this moment only the header so this is a snapshot which will help you recollect what is the combo of vlookup match formula looks like let's talk more about vlookup and match especially the intricacies that you must be aware of Now, although we wrote this formula in our last video session we saw how vlookup was capturing the entire table array as indicated by the red border on my screen and how match is trying to find the word cost in the small border color green border color region and giving the count for sales 2 for cost 3 now there's some things you need to be aware of while writing vlookup match in a bigger data set and what i've done is i have tried to use mnemonic to help you remember that technique let's consider match to be junior formula and vlookup to be senior formula why because table array is what vlookup requires and it can take the whole set of data including multiple rows and columns but in match the term uses lookup array which means only one dimension and that is the reason i am referring match as a junior formula and vlookup as senior formula Now as per the logic when you're combining these two formula one thing to be aware of is junior follows senior yes the formula junior which is match should not exceed the array selection or array area of vlookup or the senior formula nor should it start later and definitely it cannot take the entire table array in simple words we are going to refer to this logic of junior follows senior i'll tell you immediately what would happen if you choose extra data or less data Right now if I go to our vlookup match formula which we had written in one of our previous videos let's assume that I am deleting the selection of lookup array for match and reselecting this time taking extra cells I'm going to press F4 and before I press enter and see the answer I wanted to ponder over something that is if you are asking match formula to look for the word cost in this blinking border area what would be the count 1 no 2 3 4 yes it is going to be 4 if match fetches you the digit 4 and this 4 becomes an input for vlookup where will vlookup table array look into first column second column third column and fourth column but there is no fourth column selection and because of which if i press enter notice a reference error this is one of the most common problems when people are trying to use vlookup and match that the selection of area for vlookup and match is not synchronized In fact, let me also show you one quick example where I'll be taking the cell selection a little less than what is required. For this case, match I'm not choosing junior follow senior principle. I am starting from the word sales and only ending at cost. At this moment, the cost 
the count of cost is 2 1 and 2 and if you give the digit 2 to VLOOKUP VLOOKUP will look into which column? second column so if I now press F4 and press enter your answer will be taken from the second column which is 4500 in both the cases we saw that if match is not in sync with VLOOKUP you will not get the correct answer in simple words whenever you are using VLOOKUP and match remember junior follows senior and most importantly where exactly do we need to use VLOOKUP and match especially when you have two dimensional data set one is placed vertically one is placed horizontally and intersection of two elements is what is supposed to fetch you the answer so the answer could be probably here and it could be marked by two variables which will help fetch you the answer that was the lookup and match another common mistake professionals make while writing the lookup and match combo formula is that sometimes in a hurry they forget to write the zero of either the lookup or match and because of which match formula assumes it's an approximate match and that's the reason right now if I press enter I am not getting any answer that is correct in fact I'm getting the same company name orange so I need to make sure that if it is an exact match that I'm trying to look for ensure that you put zero in fact the best way to write the formula now combining all the logics that we have learned in the last few video is equal to VLOOKUP look for that value amongst the two which is placed vertically in the first column of your data set that is orange comma next is table array and ensuring the prerequisite of VLOOKUP is satisfied which is the first column must contain the common link I choose the entire block I immediately press F4 so typically good practice suggests that any array that you are supposed to choose you fix it comma next I will reserve a seat for match reserving a seat means I'm just going to put a blank placeholder for match formula this ensures that you are able to minimize the syntax errors while writing combo formula comma I need to remember that VLOOKUP needs a zero for exact match so this is the framework for VLOOKUP and match to have the final portion completed let me get inside the parenthesis of match formula the focus area is purely going to be on the header and remember junior follows senior from one of our previous videos that is the logic we are going to follow so match look for something that one term which you will be able to find in the header so match look up for cost comma then making sure junior follow senior is followed choosing the header immediately fixing it and also to ensure that match also needs a zero for exact match calculation so practically there are two zeros when you are having a normal VLOOKUP and match as I press enter and just to test whether it's working I'm writing sales if I write red there we go so two elements helping you find one answer from the table This is going to be a practice exercise on VLOOKUP and MATCH, something which helps you take two elements as input and fetch the answer based on a table. Now something very similar we have on our screens, where vertically I have the region names and horizontally I have the years. Not only that, if I looked at the grouped columns and unfold one of those, you'll also see the breakup in terms of the four quarters. So for example, 2005. I had a profit of 399 for the north region and the breakup in terms of four quarters were 93 plus 75 plus 96 plus 135. Now when I unfold all these columns what I get to look at is 2003, 2004, 2005 till 2008 all these six years I have the data with proper quarterly breakup. Now as a part of a dashboard exercise what I want as the user selects from this drop down south or west or east and based on that the relevant quarter names he is able to fetch the answer automatically from the given table below now this is a two dimensional lookup why one dimension is from an element given vertically and one dimension is from an element provided horizontally and based on the intersection of those two elements please find the answer that's what we want now of course we'll be using VLOOKUP and MATCH and this be a practice exercise let's see how so we look up look for that one value which most likely you are going to find vertically provided in the main data set so I'm going to look for not quarter but in this case north even if this changes to east or west or south the lookup value logic will still hold good put a comma next table array table array selection keeping in mind the prerequisite of VLOOKUP let me start from the column which contains the common link 
so shift control down shift control right immediately I press F4 and comma now be aware that I do not have to return back to the old cell where I had started writing the formula no your formula is still getting displayed in this function bar so at this time if you press F4 it quickly takes you back there along with the dollars placed at the right positions putting a comma as per our logic column index number this has to be outsourced or delegated to the match formula who will help us count the position number that is from which column number the answer must be fetched is it the first second third fourth or fifth now typically if you were not aware of match formula and its power you would have counted manually one two three fourth column fifth column and so on so forth I just wonder that if you have to go to the quarter 2 of 2008 or let's say quarter 3 of 2007 how many columns would you have to start counting quite a lot in fact you would also not pay heed to the fact that some of the columns may be hidden and the counting may be skipped erroneously some of the professionals do a slightly better job of not counting manually instead they start selecting the cells using shift right right now you notice at the bottom right of the selection the one R multiplied with 6 C that's a sign which is indicating one row selected and six column chosen this will help you get the count as you go to quarter 3 of 06 in this case I'll have to move a little on the right quarter 306 it says 1 R into 19 C so I can go back and I can write 19 but the point is if tomorrow you change this to quarter 4 2008 it will not automatically change the count so what do I do we will feed in a match formula reserve a seat put a dummy placeholder ensure that you close the bracket right away comma since you're looking for an exact match and you're not working with a data which is exactly a slab we will be putting false or more specifically zero closing the brackets now let's pay full attention to match formula let's complete this match your work is to focus on the header and if you have watched our previous videos you would remember that we had used the analogy of junior follows senior who's the senior formula here we look up and who's the junior match formula and match is going to focus just on the header starting from where the senior formula or VLOOKUP has begun so match lookup value look for quarter 306 that's exactly what you're trying to find out in terms of count put a comma lookup array it's not a table array so you cannot you can never choose a table array like this instead in the lookup array section start selecting from where VLOOKUP had begun only for the header so I'm not choosing before I'm not choosing later I'm choosing right from the world region shift control right as explained earlier you can instantly press F4 comma F4 to fix it and comma so that you can finish the match formula with one more final parameter and that is zero for exact match so the very advantage of first reserving a seat for match formula is that you will avoid all kinds of syntax error some of the time you may forget to put a bracket here maybe some of the times you may forget to put the zero here so all this could lead to an erroneous results hence when we look at the formula just to wet whether it's correct or not all the arrays must be fixed one zero for match one for VLOOKUP that's all let me test it out press enter mm -hmm. I get the answer and as I change the quarter I get the revised answer for those who are wondering how did I create the drop down validation please refer to one of our videos which says drop down list from data validation and you'll find the mechanism how can you create the drop down list hope you enjoyed the benefits of VLOOKUP and MATCH and in fact if you had gone through our videos on indirect formula we know now that VLOOKUP MATCH plus indirect makes it a three dimensional lookup well in context of that let me now add another flavor to this entire lookup strategy that is H lookup with MATCH although we look up with match will suffice your need but let me also show you with the same logic lines how H lookup can be combined with match formula using this example now what I have before me is a sheet from the insurance advisor and life insurance cover amount is provided in column A so all these are hypothetical amounts it says in case the age is more than or equal to zero that means up to 25 these are the premium amount you must pay for example, if I wish to take a cover of let's say 1 lakh, that is one tenth of a million, and my age happens to be 24, then what is the premium I must pay? I would be paying 
a premium of 1049. Now, in case my age touches 26, in fact, I then should be liable to pay the premium amount in the manner of 1377. So I should be able to get an answer immediately and automatically in this blank cell. So one variable is placed horizontally and that happens to be age and one variable is placed vertically and that happens to be the life cover, the sum in short. So how do I apply HLOOKUP with match? Well, let me first tell you the basic difference between VLOOKUP and match and HLOOKUP and match. If you remember from our previous discussion, junior follows senior strategy. The VLOOKUP covers the entire table and match assists by choosing just the header values and that is a junior. Junior follows senior, right? Now, since VLOOKUP requires column index number, hence we applied match in the header. But HLOOKUP requires row index number and that is the reason we will be putting match formula on the first column of the entire table selection. So HLOOKUP will look up for the entire table array and match will assist HLOOKUP by looking inside this row index number, the first column. Keeping that in mind, let me begin writing HLOOKUP with match formula. Let me expand the entire screen. So here it goes, equal to HLOOKUP, tab key, HL, tab key will give you the HLOOKUP bracket open. Now lookup value, is it going to be age? Is it going to be sum insured? Since it is HLOOKUP, it is going to be something which is can be found in the header and that happens to be age, comma. Next, table array. Whatever you do, just ensure that the first row of your selection must contain the common link of age. That is a prerequisite of HLOOKUP. So you cannot choose the data like this. This will be incorrect. The selection must begin from the header which includes the age. So from there, shift control down. I press immediately F4 to freeze it, comma. I'll reserve a seat for match, immediately closing the bracket, and then comma. Now question is, do I put zero or do I put one? Since HLOOKUP is looking for 26 and 26 or 29 or 32, whatever that age be, I need an approximate match. And remember from our old discussion, if you have a data based on a slab, in ascending order, placed in more than equal to format. You will have to give one, and that is what we have done. Approximate match with the three conditions. Now, let me go to match. You're going to look for the sum insured. Why? Because that is what I'm going to find in the vertical placed column. So I look up for the one lakh, comma. Do I choose from the 50,000 or sum insured? Well, if you remember the junior follows senior principle, you would recommend me that I must choose the cell selection from the word sum insured. Shift control down, immediately pressing F4 to freeze it. Notice the dollar has been placed correctly and comma. Now ask yourself, do I put zero or do I put one? If you put zero, it means exact match. You may be looking for a sum insured, let's say 1,20,000. Well, there is no 1,20,000 out here. So you are looking at a data which is placed in a slab, ascending order and more than equal to. Hence, I'm going to put one. Let me press enter and let's see what it gives me. So as expected, 26 age, 1 lakh cover, 1377. And if I change the age to let's say 35, same cover. But moment I put let's say 36, then notice the premium amount. It's going to turn to 1852. So that is how it is working with a slab based data. The slab exists in the age as well as the sum insured. And the same logic I've applied and given that as a solution in the next sheet. So this was HLOOKUP with match. And remember, when you are applying HLOOKUP with match, this is how it is going to look like. Where the junior is placed on the first column and junior follows senior. So that was one quick example of HLOOKUP with match. And if you want, I can quickly write VLOOKUP with match just beside it. So VLOOKUP, look for that variable which is given vertically. So hence I'm choosing not age which I had chosen in HLOOKUP. I'm choosing the sum insured. That is the variable given vertically, comma. I start from the selection, first column. That is a prerequisite of VLOOKUP. It must contain the common link. Shift control, right is the shortcut key which I'm using to choose the entire data. Pressing F4, comma, reserving a seat for match. And then noticing that the data is in a slab vertically. I'll be putting one and match. Match, please look for something that is present horizontally, the header. 
So match looks for age 36, comma, where junior follows senior and I press F4, comma, 0. No, it has to be 1 because this is where the slab base data does exist. Enter. So yes, you are getting the same answer. Either you apply HLOOKUP with match or VLOOKUP with match. In this video, we'll learn something about indirect formula. A formula which people rarely use, but once they start using it, they'll find immense benefit in almost any formula. And gradually you'll see how powerful this formula is if you start using it in combination of other formulas such as VLOOKUP MATCH, INDEX MATCH MATCH or some IFS or IF statement. But to understand this, we need to undergo some experiments in Excel, which we will now. So we'll start with experiment number one. Now, in the yellow cell, I'm writing A5. Now you'll gradually know why am I writing A5, but at this moment I'm writing A5. And I may ask you that if I write a formula below that, which points to the cell above, and if I press enter, what is going to be the natural answer? A5, I agree. This appears to be a very basic question, but now in contrast to what I've written right now, I am going to write a formula called indirect. Now indirect, I'm pointing to the yellow cell, closing the brackets. Let me first press enter and show you what gets displayed as a result and then we'll discuss about it. Notice this time I'm getting the term blue. So basically indirect formula is asking the formula to go to a particular cell and the cell may act as a desk. That desk contains an address chit. The address chit is containing the address which is A5 and that's the reason it is taking the value from A5. To understand this through an illustration, you look at this particular diagram. A person who has been asked to go to an address. Now, unless he finds that address chit, he will not be able to locate the address to which he must go to. He is being directed to a desk which contains the address chit, in this case A5. And using that A5 or the cell reference or the address chit, he is able to pinpoint the exact location to which he must go to. So basically, we are going to relate this example with our experiment. That is, indirect formula is asking you to go to a particular desk, which is B3, the cell B3. And the cell B3, which we will consider as a desk, contains the address chit A5. And the address chit leads us to the right location, which now contains blue. At this moment, if I write A6, enter, black. If I write A1, enter, we get experiment 1. And if I write A2, nothing, 0. It's a blank cell. If I write A space 1, notice I'm getting a reference error because this is an invalid address. The correct address is A1. Now, as a sub-experiment, let's do one more task. That is, I'm going to choose this particular cell and name this as color 1 with no spaces. This is the phenomenon of naming a cell or a range. If you want to know more about it, please refer to our earlier videos. And at this moment, after writing the name of the cell, I'm going to press enter. Similarly, I go to the next cell and I'm going to give a nickname of color 2. Color 2. And must make sure that I press enter. Only and only then the name does get registered. So by now, color 1 is indicating the cell A5 and color 2 is indicating black. Now, if I write color 1, isn't it a valid address for Excel right now? If it is, then I can effectively use indirect formula, point to the cell, this is just the desk on which the address chit is placed and using that address of color 1, it pinpoints me to the value of. If you want to know more about the names, you can also go to formulas tab and look at name manager because name manager will contain some of the names which I have recently given and some names which were given previously. So I can delete these other three names which are not required and just be content with the two for our experiment. This may seem theoretical, but believe me, after one or two more videos on indirect formula, which are there in the series, this will be crystal clear. As a continuation of the previous discussion, where we were talking about the basics of indirect formula, with this time, take care of experiment number two. Now, by now you would be wondering where the indirect formula could actually be applied and this will be the starting of the answer seeking exercise. We have three columns, so Jan, Feb, March and each of them has two numbers based below it. So that Jan 1, 2, Feb 3, 4, March 5, 6. Now, we want a mechanism by which 
I change the yellow cell to let's say MAR, I should be getting answer 11. If I write Feb, then I should be getting answer as 7, basically a sum of the numbers underneath it. Now one option could be that you start using if. People do that. They say if the cell is equal to Feb, then in that case it should fetch me a summation of these two values. Perfect. Else, please go ahead and ask another question. If the same cell A15 is equal to JAN, that in double quotation, then in that case sum should be based on these two values. Mm -hmm. Else, sum should be based on the MAR. Closing the brackets once, once again, once again, and that's the formula. Now notice just for three months the formula length is so large. Imagine if you had 12 months data, the length of the formula would have been four times this. So we want a faster and easier mechanism, a very small and easy formula and the main point is it should not increase in length the moment more months come into the picture. Now let's see how to achieve this. First, I'm going to choose these 1 and 2 and name this as JAN. You can use uppercase, lowercase in writing the name JN, but make sure that after writing the name you press enter. If you have these two cells, FEB, enter. These two cells, I am writing MAR and pressing enter. So henceforth, I have three more names, Feb pointing to these two cells, Jan pointing to these two and March, MAR to these cells. So now, what if I write some formula and this sum needs a location from where the numbers must be picked for totaling up. Now the location is dependent on the yellow cell. Basically this is the desk where address chit is mentioned. If address changes, the sum formula will go to a different address. But who will lead me to this address? The concept of redirection that is going to be given by indirect formula. So indirect, go to this particular cell that contains the address chit and this will tell you where to go. So as of now Feb is pointing to where? 3 and 4? and because of which I'm getting 7. By the way, if you wanted to know what is going on in Excel's mind, you can simply choose the indirect formula starting right from I, ending till the bracket of indirect and pressing function key F9. So the moment I change this to Jan, I get 3. The moment I change this to MAR, I'm getting 5 plus 6. So internally what is happening, indirect is a formula which is going to this desk. It is taking the address and going to the right location and these two numbers once it is fed to the sum formula it quickly adds up the numbers. Now you might tell me look if there are nine more months of data do I need to name these two cells respectively for all the remaining nine months? No. Let's see fast how this can be done. Let's say I have data till December and what I'm doing is I'm simply going to add plus one to the previous cell so that we populate a random set of numbers for our exercise. Now instead of naming them individually as APR, MAY, JUN, JUL, I can choose the entire block including the name. As discussed in one of the previous videos with respect to names, mass name or bulk naming, we have a technique with us that is you go to formulas tab and there's a button called create from selection. Primarily it points to the fact that you can create the names from the selected area. So I click on create from selection and it says create names from selection and take the names from where? From the top row. If I press OK, it seems that nothing has happened on my screen. But to know more, let's look at the drop down of the name box. Whoa, I'm getting all the names of the month in the three letter format which has begun in the heading. Just for testing, if I put let's say JUL, this point in these two cells and to make the formula work, I'll simply modify the drop down list such that it incorporates other nine months. So I go to the yellow cell, data tab, within which look for data validation. Click on data validation. The item suggests that allow a list but the source is restricted to only these three cells. So let me change those three selections right from Jan till December and as I press OK, this drop down has all the 12 months value. So if I now choose AUG, let me check 10 plus 11, 21. So there you go. With the same length of that formula, we are able to derive an answer right from Jan till December. This is using the technique of indirect and naming. In the super video, we'll talk about three-dimensional lookup. 
And let me tell you, if you want to proceed with this exercise, please go through indirect formula, naming concept and VLOOKUP and MATCH. Only in that case, you'll be able to extract the best flavor out of this video. So now, let me illustrate the question. So at this moment, I have a group of employee names and along with that, I have a column dedicated towards their salary, which division that they work for, which region or cost center they have been assigned into. So APAC refers to Asia Pacific, RO refers to rest of the world and what rating have they received? Now the question is, based on the rating and the division that they work for, along with the region under which they have been classified, you need to allot them bonus percentage in column G. For example, if the first person belongs to HFD and he has received a rating 3 and he belongs to APAC, APAC means Asia Pacific. So APAC table says HFD rating number 3, it should be 25%. Now you can do this with filter, but imagine applying filter 80 times. Why do I say 80 times? Because one percentage is based on three variables, APAC, HFD, rating one. So if you apply filter, you have to first filter out APAC people within APAC who are the HFD guys who have received rating one. And you have to do that how many times? 80 times in this case study. Why? Five ratings, eight divisions, 40 times. 40 plus 40 that makes it 80 because the next table refers to the percentage bonus for people who are working under row or rest of the world now i've seen people they start using if statement but wait if they move along with if statement they will definitely have to use and formula and notice how does it look and is the rating equal to one is the region equal to apac and is the division equal to hfd if all these conditions are met, then please give him 45%. Now notice the length of the formula that you had to write just to arrive at one answer that is 45%. This is just one of the values from the first table. Imagine same length of formula you have to write for each and every individual figures. And the length of the formula as you can imagine is going to cross several miles. So we will see in the solution video how can we achieve this using three dimensional lookup. So now that the question is clear that we need to assign appropriate bonus percentage to these employees based on division, region and rating, let's proceed with the solution. Now we'll be using VLOOKUP MATCH and INDIRECT and to do that first I need to name the appropriate arrays, both table arrays and lookup arrays which are going to be referred by VLOOKUP and MATCH formula. So now I'm choosing the first table, going to the name box, giving a generic name APACA back. Now since this is the senior selection and for those viewers who are finding this new term senior, please refer to one of our old videos on VLOOKUP MATCH. You'll get the idea to which section am I referring to senior selection and to what reference am I referring to junior selection. So at this moment I am choosing this particular section and giving this a name APAC followed by H. H indicates header. Enter. Similar strategy I am going to employ for the next table. I choose the table number 2, go to name box and write ROW and press enter. I choose the table heading, I then name it ROWH. Please note I am using the same naming convention which is whatever the name of the entire table array or senior in our reference. I am just affixing H or header, short form for header towards the end. So as I press enter, towards the end of this entire process I will have four names APAC, APAC H, row, row H. Now. Let me begin by writing the formula. So V look up, look up for rating. Why so? Because this is the one variable which you will be able to find in the first column of both the tables from where you are supposed to fetch the answer, comma, table array. Now if you are choosing this table physically, you'll notice towards the end of the selection automatically the APAC word comes up, which means since the table has been named, we can write APAC and this will refer to the table. The first one marked by the red border comma. This is our senior. The table array is our senior. Now column index number will be fulfilled by the match formula. Let me write in match formula. Press the tab key and close the bracket immediately. Following our strategy of putting a dummy placeholder of a formula inside a comma formula, first finishing off the entire framework and then returning back to match formula. At this moment, 
I put comma and let me check is this data a slab no it is continuous right so as per our previous discussions on VLOOKUP with true we must put zero because this data is not a slab now it's the turn of match formula match your focus is to find the column index number from where the answer must be fetched so as per our data HFD lies in the second column I want match to fetch us two. how would it do so match look for the term HFD mm -hmm, comma and where would you lo start looking for it remember the old strategy of junior follow senior we will not take extra cells we will not take lesser number of cells we will start exactly from the boundaries of the senior or we look up selection and notice as soon as I do so the APAC H names comes up on our screen so I press comma zero to ensure it's an exact match and let me test whether this is going to work or not oh yeah I get the 25% and you can notice HFD rating number three is 25% if I put rating one changes to 45% if I change the division name CDFD and I should be getting 100% CDFD rating one but wait if I change the region to ROW will the answer change should have but doesn't for the simple reason your formula still holds the APAC reference it is not letting VLOOKUP and match formula to go to the second table for referring to the values so now here we employ the trick which is the final part we will create a desk which will harbor the chit address chit of the junior selection what do I mean by that you'll get to know in a minute's time I write equal to I choose the previous cell and I'm putting an ampersand followed by in double quotation the letter H this ensures that when I double click at the bottom right of the cell every one cell in that column has the name of the region followed by H now next trick is I get inside the main formula I delete this word APAC instead I am putting indirect formula and following our strategy I'm closing the bracket right now now this indirect formula needs the desk it is going to the desk which is now pointing to D5 this is the cell containing row now imagine what would happen eventually when I press enter indirect formula goes to the desk the desk contains an address chit row and this means it will be taken to the second tables table array similarly if I go to APAC H if I delete this portion and I put indirect immediately closing the bracket and this indirect will be pointing to the cell E5 so it's going to the cell containing row H and it will be redirected to the row H header enter now you see 110% and that is the answer what we wanted to find out for CDFD rating 1 and the best part if I change this to APAC region you will get 100% so there you go all I have to do is copy paste the remaining and these answers have been now derived using three dimensional lookup one dimension rating one dimension division name and the third dimension being the region so as I ungroup the entire set of employee list you'll notice towards the end right till the end I have been able to calculate the percentage bonus now imagine if you had two more regions and a table would have looked like this maybe Latin America or maybe Gulf the formula length will not change it will remain the same all you have to do is simply name the additional tables as per the revised region the time short form for Latin America and in fact you'll also notice despite the division name being in the header being different in terms of sequence the answer comes out correctly and you can verify the accuracy of this answer in fact before I close this I'll quickly test it for HFD perfect answer changes rating number three answer changes so here you go the concept that we applied was we look up match indirect in this discussion we'll talk about a very interesting topic in Excel and something which have been asked repeatedly since last four to five years and that is reverse lookup let me illustrate the problem first assume that you are faced with a normal set of displayed data as you can see from the table one the vertically placed data sets are company names and horizontally placed data is the financial parameter EBITDA and EBIT now if somebody asks you that I want to find the reds EBITDA it's a very simple phenomenon of VLOOKUP match with which you are able to fetch the answer why so because the VLOOKUP's prime prerequisite which is the common link must be placed in the first column now if I tell you 
temporarily ignore table 1 and focus on table 2. Now the question remains the same that you have to fetch Red's EBITDA based on table number 2's placement and the answer should be 3400 without a doubt. So if you proceed with VLOOKUP, this is how it is going to look like. Look up for the value red. Why? Because that is placed vertically. But wait, since the prerequisite of VLOOKUP suggests that you must choose the first column to be the one which contains the common link. Now if you do so and you proceed with the normal step of freezing or locking the range F4 comma. Question is what column index number would you give which will help you fetch the answer under the term EBITDA. You cannot give one because that will mean you are referring to company name. No. Column number two would be fetching the answer from EBIT. You cannot give minus one although the logic says that you have to go to the column prior to the first column to fetch the answer but minus one is not allowed as a column index number. So basically you get stuck and the most common step everybody takes is yes you could have guessed it right that they cut this section they place a cursor in the first available cell and they say insert cut cells. So basically they are changing the structure of the data set from where the answer must be fetched. Now this may not be possible all the time because you might be working with really complex data and just cutting one column and placing it differently might destabilize the entire Excel model which may be interlinked. At times the client or the end user may have given you an Excel sheet which is protected. So with that protected sheet you cannot simply change the placement of the column as you could do so easily in this particular example. So the question is how do you do a reverse lookup such that whenever you type in EBIT it gives you the answer based on EBIT's column and if you write EBITDA the answer from the left hand side and that's what we want. So this is reverse lookup and we are going to learn this using a formula called index along with the combination of match formula. So if you have not learnt about match formula, I will suggest that you please go through our video on match formula and then proceed with this particular formula of index. After having discussed the main problem at hand with respect to the data set and with respect to reverse lookup, let's now proceed and see the mechanism how does this new formula of index work and helps us. So as we noticed earlier that VLOOKUP could not have been used in this case because the common link is placed in the middle and I need an answer from the column before it. So we will apply a formula of index. Now we'll go slow on this. Why? because this index formula requires some explanation in terms of logic. The first line of parameter that is what we are going to focus upon. It says array. It doesn't say lookup array or table array. It simply says array which means you have the flexibility to choose a small array with one dimension or maybe two dimension. At this moment we will refer this array as chessboard. Yes chessboard. If I tell you that look I have chosen this as my chessboard. I'm going to fix that. And this small hypothetical chessboard, now do not consider the chessboard to be the one which you normally play, but as a hypothetical scenario made up of grids, grids of rows and columns, this is our hypothetical chessboard. In this chessboard, what I've been asked is row number. So let me hypothetically provide a number, let's say two comma, and it says column number. So I say two. So in this entire grid, which is made up of several rows, and three columns. If somebody gives you the coordinates similar to what we have been using in terms of latitude and longitude. Similarly, if I locate row number two, which is this one and column number two, which is this one, the intersection of the two is going to point to what cell the cell containing orange. And that's what I'm going to get if I press enter. So primarily this formula of index works like latitude and longitude. It needs the surface area and it needs the coordinates one row number second column number. Okay that was theory but let's see how do we apply this theory to fetch our answer. To begin with let me just ask you to look at this particular picture which illustrates the point. Point of what? Point that in the first parameter of index array refers to the chessboard. I will need the count of row number. For example, if somebody asks me which row number is the company red located in, especially with respect to this blinking border area, that's the third row. 
If somebody would have asked me where is orange, I would have told second row. Now, how are you coming to this conclusion of second row being orange and third row being red? Because you are counting vertically, top to bottom. So one, two, three. That's for red. Blue would be one, two, three, four. So the point is, if you have been asked by index formula row number, you are counting vertically. Similarly, if somebody would have asked you, please give me the column number for EBITDA, you would have certainly told one. For EBIT, you would have pointed to the third column. Why third? Because you are counting horizontally or sideways. So the point here is, inside the index formula, the third parameter, which talks about column number, you are trying to calculate the sequence in horizontal manner. So keeping this picture in our mind, let me place it at the right place. And once I do so, let me proceed with the formula. So here it goes, equal to index, array will be the entire table. And you don't need to worry about whether you are going to choose from the first column, which is blank, or the first column, which has the company name, doesn't matter. Choose the entire area. As usual, any array, I'm going to fix it, F4 comma. Now, instead of you doing the counting, one, two, three, or EBITDA, one, two, three, for EBIT three, we will delegate this task to who? Yes, we'll delegate this task to match formula. So I'm going to reserve a seat for one match formula in place of row number. The next match formula is going to hold its position where the formula is asking for column number. So both these match formula individually, one will work for row number, one will work for column number. Now, why did I put the dummy placeholders first? For starters, especially if you're starting this formula for the first time, I would seriously advise that first you dedicate this placeholders so that you avoid any kind of syntax errors. So once the framework is clear in your mind, then we target the first match. How do we write the first match formula? Who has been allotted to find row number? Now, always the first match is going to focus on something which is vertically placed. What is the common link which is vertically placed? If you're thinking EBITDA, notice if later point in time, if I write EBIT, that EBIT would not be shown in the first column. So I want something which is consistently placed in the first column or second column or third column, basically any one column. And that would be what? Company name. So first match, look for red, comma. As we remember from our old VLOOKUP match discussions, junior follows senior, which means index being the senior formula, match will follow its footsteps. So it will choose the entire array where the common link is placed, but ensure that it doesn't start before, nor does it start later. It start right from where index has begun. And since match is a junior formula, it cannot take an table array. It has to take a lookup array. So match, please start looking for the word red and start finding the count in this region. Of course, it's going to give you one, two, three. So I'm going to press F4, comma, zero. Zero is for exact match. Now targeting the second match. Second match always will look for column number and column number can be found if you're trying to find something horizontally. Now what is that common link which is placed horizontally? That's nothing but the financial parameter EBITDA and EBIT. So match, look up for EBITDA. Earning before interest tax and depreciation amortization. So look up for EBITDA, comma, and start counting from where? Not before, not later. Junior follows senior, same concept. So it's like a crisscross that is happening on this junction. After having selected the desired area, I'm going to press F4, comma zero being the standard notation. So the first index, it's capturing the entire chessboard. The next formula match, first instance of match inside this index formula, will focus on something vertically because it needs to find row number and the next match formula is going to find something horizontally. As I press enter, notice red EBITDA. Red on the reverse side, I have EBITDA's number, still fetches me the result. This could not have been done using VLOOKUP and match. Just to quickly compare VLOOKUP match versus index match match, these are the two pictures, illustrations, which will explain the difference between the two. So index, how it works, it is going to focus on the chessboard first. The first junior or the first match will focus on something vertically, wherever it is placed either first column or second column or third column. The second match will focus on something which is horizontally placed, in this case, the header. So there are practically two match formula. Whereas in VLOOKUP, the main formula is already trying to find the common link vertically. So hence, we only need one match formula and that too to find column index number. 
This is going to be a practice task on index match match, something that is quite often used for reverse lookup. Before we begin with the exercise, just a quick recap with the methodology that we were trying to apply index match match. In index, the first parameter of the formula asks for array selection, which we had referred by the term chessboard, mini chessboard. The second two parameters talks about coordinates, row number first followed by column number. Row number will be calculated vertically, 1, 2, 3, top to bottom, and column number will be calculated horizontally or sideways, that is 1, 2, 3. Now the data structure would look like this. This will be the full chessboard. The first match will focus on one column, either this or this or this, basically any one column where the common link is present, and the second match will focus on horizontal or sideways movement. Now, keeping that in mind, let's look at this particular task. The table on the left, we have two scenarios where we are looking at a table of employee IDs. That's here. The names are on the left hand side of the ID codes and gender age followed on the right hand side. Now looking at the ID codes, I want us to fetch the name. This could not have been done using VLOOKUP unless of course you choose to cut this particular column and place it in the first column of the table array. But assuming we are not able to do so, we will stick to index match match. So equal to index, the first parameter array, which refers to chessboard. Let me choose the entire chessboard. This is our terminology in discussion. Now, after having chosen the array, I'm going to press F4 to fix it, comma. Now I need two coordinates, one for row, one for column number. So I'm going to dedicate two match formulas, one after another. Now reserving a seat for each of the two match formula helps me avoid the syntax errors later point in time. Let me now focus on the first match. The first match is going to look for an array which is lying vertically top to bottom and that is the ID code column. Within which what are the common link? That's the ID code. So match please look for 8736, comma. Next will be lookup array which means junior follows senior, the same principle which we had referred to in our earlier videos. That is, it should not start from before the start of the table array selection of the index or later. It will start from the boundaries of the array selection. Now making sure it is fixed to comma zero to make sure it is an exact match that the match formula is trying to look for. Next match formula, look for any term that you are able to find in the header. So basically you cannot look for 8736 because 8736 cannot be found in the header. What can be found is the word name. Now I'll have to fix this so that I don't want this to move down as I copy paste the formula. So I'm going to fix this, comma. Next will be choosing the lookup array, which this time is going to refer to a sideways movement. So the same concept applied, junior follow senior, not starting before, not starting later. And choosing from mobile number till the last cell value age. I'm going to fix that to F4, comma, zero. Let me test whether the formula works. Enter, perfect. In fact, let me copy paste and see whether it works for the remaining two. In fact, when I change the header to let's say gender, I get the gender as an answer. Age, there you go. Mobile number, definitely correct. Now, just an add on to this exercise, assume that if I press Control R at this instance, it quickly copies pastes the cell on the right. And if I choose name, I would want the formula which we wrote is equally applicable as I copy paste it right and down but it doesn't. Let's just discuss why. When I double click on the NA, the first few things that I will notice on the screen is the colored borders. The blue colored border which is right now highlighted indicates the area of the chessboard or index. The purple one is indicating the first match lookup array and the pink one is indicating the lookup array of the second match. Now what we also notice is these two lookup values. The first one actually has traveled from this cell to the next one since it was not fixed. On the other hand, this particular cell mobile number was fixed, hence it is not able to move to the next cell. So we need to rectify two things. One, we go back to the main formula. First things first, this C4, I need to ensure that it remains in column C, but at the same time, it should be able to move to five and six. So I put my cursor around C4, I keep on pressing F4 until I get dollar C, followed by four, no dollars before four. This ensures that column C remains in column C. Next, D3. I want to ensure that when I copy paste the formula towards the right hand side, this D3 should be able to jump to E3. Hence, for that to happen, I need to remove the dollar before D. So I have four, there you go. Now you might ask me, why am I putting the dollar before three? 
because I don't want that the maths lookup value which is currently pointing to the value in the cell of third row should be able to move down to fourth or fifth or sixth. So be very careful this is $C4 and this is D$3. Now let me just select the cell all the array where I need to copy paste the formula I'll press Ctrl D Ctrl R. Now we get the perfect answer and this was index match match for reverse lookup. If you're watching this portion which means you have covered a significant portion of the video and congratulations for that you are investing in yourself and I love that people who take out time to improve to grow I really respect them and if you found something really interesting something new this time and something that you think can apply in your work please do mention that in the comment section I'll come back with a new video I'm Rishabh signing off from Yoda Learning Academy right now and I'll see you soon